So, you know, we, we've done a lot of work at Americans for Safe Access to create product safety protocols for uh, cannabis products. And for some reason it's not letting me, oh, here we go. Um, and so just to remind people, you know, there are 5 million registered patients um, in the United States using medical cannabis for all of these. <laughs> this, is, this is just to make a point, you're not supposed to read this slide. Um, but we now have you know, 38 states um, that have uh, medical cannabis programs. Um, and in each of these states, we have uh, a, a different uh, level of product safety um, and labeling requirements. And so for many of our, our patients that are, that are on here, none of this is gonna be new information, but it's always good to remind people that when we are talking about people who are living with cannabis, that we're using cannabis, that, like what it means for us to be living with cannabis means that we're paying 100% out of pocket costs for our medicine. We're um, using cannabis daily. Um, we're using cannabis to carry out our life's activities, to go to work, to go to school, to you know, take care of our families, our children. We, we have restricted travel and we're utilizing cannabis to control um, our diseases or our symptoms of those conditions. And so, um, as we've been talking about a lot uh, over the last um, uh, last few days, um, you know, medical cannabis patients are the ones who have brought these laws um, to each of these states. The whole reason we have a cannabis marketplace is because of patients. Um, and the only reason that these businesses are not being raided by the federal government is because of patient advocacy. And so, we really want to make sure that um, those businesses that, that are enjoying those protections and those state licenses uh, really understand why we need to see product safety uh, protocols applied to our, our medication. So one of the things that we, because we don't, you know, people are like, well, who cares, right? If, if the label's a little off. And, you know, for patients, if we're getting, if we're not getting the right product, that can mean a decline in symptom relief. It can mean that if we get a product that, that it has higher THC than what we expected, we might not be able to go to work or school that day. Uh, we may not be able to carry out responsibilities we have to our family, like watching our children um, or, or other, um, other responsibilities we have. We may be experiencing extreme discomfort um, if we can't find the right product, we may actually backslide in our treatment success. Um, we may test positive on a drug test when we thought we were just using a CBD product. Um, and we could also see challenges to daily tasks. But I think the other big thing that people aren't realizing is that if a patient cannot find the right product, they may just turn away from medical cannabis products altogether. And so when we look at the... Um, the various state laws, and this is based on um, data from uh, 2021. So we'll be updating this information for next year. Um, but uh, while we look at potency tests uh, across the country, you have to remember that, that none of this is applied to the CBD markets. Um, and um, we're also seeing is that, that within the potency tests, only a few, um, actually have it be mandatory um, and that there's only, um, you know, a limited amount of um, cannabinoids that are actually on those labels. And I realized that when we first started passing these laws that there was only available standards for THC and CBD. Um, but now as consumers have demanded, knowing more about the cannabinoid products, there's a lot more um, cannabinoids that uh, that product manufacturers can uh, utilize and, and put on their labels for patients. Um, so homogeneity is super important. I think we've all had the experience where <clears throat> we get a product and it says that there's 100 milligrams in the product and it says we can we should tear off a little piece to get five milligrams. Um, but if that if that product hasn't been tested to make sure that there's the same cannabinoids throughout, then you may be getting a 80% THC bite um, and then no THC in the rest of the bite. So, so very important. Um, <clears throat> one thing that we're also um, trying to 
encourage consumers to understand is how to read a um, certificate of analysis. And this may look very complicated, but when, before you buy a product um, at, a, at a dispensary, you can ask them for the certificate of analysis on a product that you're, that you're buying. And they should be able to uh, hand you something that looks like this. Um, and um, ACES, um, uh, I thought I had this one here, on our um, uh, patient's guide to, to CBD, um, we have an analysis of sort of understanding what each of these means, but it should you should at least look and see what the batch number is, that it matches the product you're buying, um, that um, you can look and see what the microbial tests are, what whether they were, whether they were heavy metals. And again, if you're buying something in a dispensary, they should be able to provide you this for each product. And um, I wanna spend more of this to actually talk to you guys about the contaminants that we find in cannabis and why it's important uh, to make sure that, that these are being tested for. So um, because I'm sure you've heard of E. coli, nasty stuff. Um, uh, for patients, this could, you know, these symptoms can include abdominal uh, cramping, diarrhea, fever, vomiting, um, and some more severe coma, stroke. Um, and so these may not be things that may be symptoms that you're feeling that you may not associate necessarily uh, with your cannabis use. Um, salmonella, um, again, cramps, diarrhea, um, uh, dis, you know, uh, gastrointestinal discomfort, um, but also can spread from your intestinal tract into your bloodstream, bone marrow, heart, brain, spinal cord, um, and make you severely ill. Aspergillus, sinus or lung infections, chronic uh, pulmonary aspergillus. These are, again, things you may not associate specifically with your, your cannabis use. Uh, gray mold. Um, so a lot of people may have feel lung inflammation or have symptoms that are, you know, very similar to allergies, but if those aren't going away, um, you know, and you're going to your doctor looking for a solution, this might be kind of confusing, right? To see, um, you know, that you're having allergies that won't go away and know that this could be from contaminants in your, in your cannabis. Uh, yeast and mold, again, um, this can, um, uh, bring on allergies, sinus infections, um, pneumonia, and over time can actually um, uh, turn into asthma. And within 41 states, we have 36 states that are doing some type of microbial testing. But when you dive into each of these states, none of them are the same. All of them are using different microbial levels. And you know, this is another reason why we need a federal program for product safety. Um, so then we get into other contaminants, um, like toxins, um, they create birth defects. I mean, these are pretty scary things, liver damage, kidney damage, um, and at high levels, they can, they can possibly be a, a carcinogen. And out of the 41 states that we looked at, only 27 um, require testing. And again, these levels are all over the place. Uh, pesticides. Now, pesticides um, are, we realize, are very hard to test for because there isn't just a simple test um, that um, that you can look at and see, is there a pesticide here? You have to actually um, know what pesticide, pesticides you're looking for. And again, this is why we have to make sure that our regulations aren't putting all the responsibility of product safety on labs. Um, let's just imagine if all your leafy vegetables had to get tested for every single pesticide, um, then our lettuce wouldn't just be three times what it's normally expensive what it is right now, um, but it would be you know horribly expensive if if they had to run hundreds of tests to check for pesticides. And the way that um, we see testing and product safety applied to other agricultural products is that they um, do inspections upstream. So inspectors can see what pesticides are being used on site and make sure that downstream um, that they're testing for uh, residuals of those pesticides. Um, out of 41 states, only 33 are testing for pesticides. And again, um, that pesticide list is uh, all over the place. <laughs> um, heavy metals, these are, um, I think, 
uh, if anyone has studied the cannabis plant, you'll know that, that one of the reasons that we have to really look at product safety protocols for, um, for the cannabis plant is that it's for two reasons. One is that cannabis has a very high uh, water content at harvest, which means that it's very susceptible to molds and mildews, but it also is a bioaccumulator, which means that the cannabis plant uh, will pull any heavy metals out of the soil. And in fact, I was working on a, a project in the Czech Republic and we were utilizing hemp in these fields and hemp actually had pulled up these pesticides that had not been used since World War II that were still in the ground. And so we have to make sure that anytime we're looking at cannabis um, you know, being sold for human consumption, that heavy metals are part of those, those tests. Um, and 29 of 41 states um, are testing for some level of, of heavy metals. Um, but again, um, this is a, a diverse list for, from each state and the uh, acceptable levels are also all over the place. Um, so contaminated cannabis is something we, you know, we've seen um, you know, some extreme cases like, uh, you know, when we saw people dying from, um, from vitamin E in, um, in vaporized products. Um, but, you know, the, you know, if there are still traces of ethanol or butane or pro propane left in these solvents, um, you know, we're talking about some pretty severe, um, side effects, uh, you know, every, anything from headache, uh, to brain damage to death. And I also want to mention that in all of you know these things that I mentioned, these symptoms are are much more severe in children, the, el the elderly, or individuals with compromised immune system, which represent a lot of the cannabis patient population. So, out of 41 states, only 33 states are uh, testing for uh, residual solvents. Um, we're also starting to see. Um, uh, terpenes that are that are they're actually not extracted from the plant, but actually coming from other um, other sources that people are adding into cannabis products um, after uh, the extraction process. Um, and we've seen all sorts of um, um, issues with those products. And right now, only eight of forty one states are testing to see if there are foreign terpenes added. And uh, going back to the state of the states report, as Abby was just talking about the way that we grade the, um, the consumer protection product safety, um, you know, this includes, we do a deep dive into manufacturing, dispensary operations, cultivation, and laboratories. And out of, we looked at all of the states um, when you know, Nevada actually had the highest um, percentage, the highest grade for product safety, and that was only um, at 84%. Uh, so you can see we have a long way to go of getting states to adopt product safety protocols. Again, um, you know, product safety protocols are not there to penalize companies, they're there to protect patients. Um, and then of course, I just wanna remind people that right now there are no product safety regulations for CBD products or for the Delta-8 products and all of those products are subject to the same um, contaminants and adulterants that I that I just mentioned. And so, you know, again, this points back why we need federal legislation and why we need uh, federal oversight uh, for all of these products. Um, as you guys probably know, we have the the patient focused certification program. Uh, we created this to work with companies to help them integrate product safety protocols into um, every step of the supply chain. Uh, we include education for people working um, in these facilities and for management. Uh, we also have um, quality control management trainings as well. And so our recommendations to, um, you know, to make sure that product safety is a part of all cannabis products is of course to pass federal legislation creating the National Office of Medical Cannabis um, to create more upstream product safety inspections um, or require third-party certifications. 
um, for states to adopt more robust testing programs and protocols. And we also need to see required proficiency testing in the labs so that um, you know, a product um, that a patient picks up in Los Angeles uh, will uh, have the same label as a product uh, that they pick up in San Francisco. Um, there was actually a report that just came out this year um, that, that also did a state level comparison of the regulations for cannabis. Um, you can uh, find this, this article on uh, pubmed.gov. It's called The Comparison of State Level Regulations for Cannabis Contaminants and the Implications for Public Health. Um, the authors were actually going to join us at the conference, but when we had to move to online, they weren't able to join us. So um, hopefully we will be able to see them in the spring. Um, but I've also found that the authors are really engaging and, and love talking about the report. And that is why cannabis and uh, <laughs> cannabinoid quality matters. Uh, I think that's the fastest I've ever done a presentation, mm -hmm. but I wanted to keep us on time. On behalf of Americans for Safe Act staff, the board, and all of our members, we want to say a very special thank you to our uh, Unity sponsors uh, for the 2022 Unity Conference. This is our 10th annual conference, and I know many of these sponsors have been with us for the last 10 years. So I want to say a very special thank you to Dr. Bonners, to Metric, to 3C Cannabis Consulting, to Canopy Growth, to Coma Wellness, the American Herbal Products Association, Cannabis for Cancer Declaration, Cannabis MD, Columbia Care, Council for Federal Cannabis Regulations, Healer, the National Pain Relief, Supply Chain OPEX Consulting, the University of Maryland School of Pharmacy, UKTI Collective, and Evoke. Again, thank you so much. This has been a great conference and we couldn't have done it without you all.